All right, beautiful. Thank you for joining me for a yoga for relaxation class. My name is Holly. My pronouns are she, her. This is a floor-based class. You do not need to have any fancy yoga props or prior yoga experience. You will want a carpeted area or um, a yoga mat if you have one and a couple of pillows of different sizes from around your home. You don't need like fancy yoga bolsters or um, blocks or anything like that, but some pillows of different sizes and maybe a blanket if that would feel good to you as well. Um, and again, this class is all about relaxation. It's not necessarily about like getting the deepest stretch or strength or balance. It's really about using yogic techniques, whether that's breath work, meditation, um, asanas, the postures uh, to help us relax a little bit deeper. So we will begin with a breathing exercise called four, seven, eight breathing that I think many of you have practiced before. You'll inhale through your nose for a count of four, hold the breath for seven, and then slowly exhale through your mouth through puckered lips for a count of eight. So the idea is you inhale fairly fast, hold all of this fresh oxygen in your body, and then slowly exhale through the mouth, which helps to soothe the central nervous system. It can take a few rounds of breath to figure out how fast to inhale versus exhale. If after a few rounds of breath, you're still having trouble um, catching your breath, you can keep the ratio, but instead inhale for two, hold for about three and a half seconds, and then exhale through your mouth for four. So I'll talk us through the first few rounds and then um, we can all practice together. Sitting up tall, relax your shoulders, you can close your eyes. You can do a soft fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose. You can also anchor on a spot on the, you know, the floor or the wall in front of you. So you're not moving your eyes around, but sometimes looking at an unmoving spot can be calming as well. Seal your lips, place your tongue at the roof of your mouth, just behind your teeth. And begin. Inhale through your nose for one, two, three, four. Hold the breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale through your mouth. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the nose. Four, three, two, one. Pause. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale through mouth, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale for four, hold for seven, keep your shoulders and jaw relaxed, exhale through eight, breathe in four, Pause for seven. It can help to count in your mind and that can help to uh, center your mind. Exhale for eight. Great, we'll do three more rounds of four, seven, eight breathing. Again, inhaling through the nose for four, holding for seven, and then exhaling through puckered lips for eight. Notice if you're starting to speed up your count, try to take it slow.
mind is wandering, just returning to the four, seven, eight breath. Let's do one more full round of four, seven, eight breaths. As you're ready, just return your breath to normal in and out through your nose. And place one hand over your heart space and one hand over your abdomen. So just take a few normal breaths here. You don't need to manipulate your breath in any way. Feel your body rise and fall. And throughout class, this can be your home base, just returning to your breath and your body's movement with the breath. Um, remember that this is not yoga for back pain. This is not yoga for myofascial release. This is not yoga for like a strong core. This is yoga for deep relaxation. So if at any point we're moving or breathing in a way that does not feel relaxing to you, remember that you are your greatest teacher. You can always just return here to your breath in and out to your nose. Your eyes are closed, like mine are. You can open your eyes, sitting up nice and tall. Turn your arms down by your side, and you might roll your shoulders forward a few times, backward a few times. And just relax your shoulders down, sit up nice and tall, find a moment of stillness, of breath. We'll start just by moving our neck spine. Take an inhale, stretch up. And on your exhale, tilt your right ear towards right shoulder, stretching the left side neck. And it's worth noting that I'm not mirroring you, so it might look like I'm moving my head to the left, but in fact, I'm moving my head to the right. You are welcome to follow my words or my body movement either way. Um, just know we will do the right side of postures first, unless I forget, which sometimes happens. Good, as you're ready, bring your head back up to center. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale through your nose, bring your left ear towards left shoulder. And you might notice that this side feels different from the other side, it does for me. We're not symmetrical, that's okay. Um, the goal of yoga is self-realization, right? Getting to know yourself better, self-care, being able to better care for yourself. Um, community care, right? Once you're able to take care of yourself, you're better able to take care of others. Sometimes a byproduct of a yoga practice, particularly a posture-based yoga practice, is that we even out a little bit or become more symmetrical, but that is um, like a happy byproduct, not the main goal. Good. Bring your head back to center. Take an inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bring your chin in towards your chest. Look down the center line of your body. Notice if you start to lean forward, lift your chest, roll your shoulders back and down, and then let your head drop so you're not um, rounding your whole spine. It's just the neck that we're moving at the beginning of class. Good. As you're ready, lift your nose and chin, look forward, and start to lift up. Lift through your chin. Keep your eyes open as you start to look up or even back. You can drop your head all the way back. You can also just look up towards the ceiling. We're not forcing the body here. Just getting a little bit of motion to the neck where we tend to carry tension. Good, and bring your head back to center. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale through your nose, bring your chin over your right shoulder. Look for the wall behind you again, sitting up nice and tall. Evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones so you're not leaning to one side. Good, and slowly come back to center. Other side, inhale, lengthen. Exhale to your nose. Bring your chin over your left shoulder. Look back. 
The spine moves in six different directions, right, left, backward, forward, twisting to each side. We will do all of those in class. Um, I really believe that with nice spinal mobility comes a little bit more of like a, a good quality of life. So we'll work not just on relaxation, right, but on keeping some mobility in the body so that we might relax deeper. But slowly, carefully unwind, bring your head back to center. We'll get a little bit more of the body involved. Take an inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. If it feels good, lifting your arms all the way up. Alms in prayer, exhale through your nose, pull your hands through your heart center, let your thumbs rest at your sternum. And if you'd like to set an intention for your class, you can do so here. Um, and if nothing is coming to mind, I'll offer the niyama of santosha, which means contentment. So just being content in your practice, even if your body doesn't always move exactly how you want it to, or even if the brain, you know, tends to like wander off from time to time, just being content with where you are in this moment. Good for you for practicing yoga today. Okay, take your arms down by your side and we're gonna come into all fours in tabletop position. If you have tight toes, knees, or ankles, you might roll up your yoga mat so that there's extra padding under any delicate joint, or if you don't have a yoga mat, a, um, a thin pillow, blanket, or towel will also do the trick. For tabletop, bring your hands from your wrists underneath your shoulders, hands about shoulder width distance. Spread your fingers wide and press down through your knuckles so that you're not putting all of your body weight on your wrists. On your knees, you want your knees under your hips, knees and feet about hip width distance. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, pull your abdomen in, round your spine up towards the ceiling. This is cat pose. We're just getting a little bit of more range of motion in the spine at the beginning of class. Pull your abdomen in. On your next inhale, cow pose. Drop your abdomen down, stick your butt up, roll your shoulders back and down, look up and back. When you're ready, exhale, cat pose, meow. So draw your belly button in, press your hips to ribs, ribs to hips. Push the floor away from you. Inhale into your cow pose. Drop your abdomen down. Shine your heart space forward. Roll your shoulders back and down. Keep your neck long as you look up. Good. Exhale. Cat. And inhale, cow. Exhale into a neutral spine position. Keep your left hand on the floor and on your inhale, reach your right arm up, look up towards the ceiling for a nice little spine twist, shoulder opener. And on your next exhale, place your right hand down on the floor. Good, we'll do the other side. Inhale, reach your left arm up, look up. That feels good today for me. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, right arm down. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, left arm down. Good, this time we're gonna thread the needle. Inhale, reach your right arm up. Exhale, thread the needle. Take your right arm under your left arm, right ear, right shoulder to floor. Option to keep your left hand on the floor. You can also reach your left arm up and drape right behind you, reach for your right thigh with your left hand and then thread the needle. If it does not feel good or is not accessible to you, you can come up, sit down and we'll do a different shoulder stretch. You'll take your right arm out to the right, Extend the arm across your body, bend your left arm up and pull back forearm to forearm. So you get the same deltoid stretch without putting weight on the upper body. If you are in thread the needle and your left arm is straight behind you in a bind, start by reaching your left arm up towards the ceiling and then place your left hand on the floor close to your face. Good. And then everybody together, we're going to unthread the needle. Inhale, reach your right arm up, look up. Good. Exhale through your nose, set your right hand back down on the floor. Good. So again, this is an alternative. What I'm uh, practicing here is an alternative to thread the needle. You're welcome to do this. Other side. Otherwise, other side. Take an inhale, reach your left arm up. Exhale, thread the needle. Take your left arm under right arm, right ear towards floor, right shoulder on floor. Option to keep your right hand on the floor or reach it off the floor. Reach behind you. Reach for your left thigh with your right hand. Relax your jaw. Seal your lips. Take a breath.
your right arm is right behind you for a bind. Reach your right arm up. Place your right hand down on the floor. We're going to unthread the needle in. You'll reach your left arm up. Look up. Good. Exhale, left hand down. Beautiful. We're going to come into a little bit of a longer held posture, child's pose. For child's pose, you can bring your big toes together. You're welcome to open your knees a little bit wider than your hips. And as you're ready, you can start to sink your hips back towards your heels and stretch your arms forward. You are welcome to practice this posture without pillows, um, but if it's more accessible, feels better, or just feels more luxurious and deeply relaxing, you can grab some pillows and add them to your child's pose. So a few ways that we can use pillows in this posture. Um, if your hips don't come down towards your heels, that is very common. You can place as many pillows as you'd like in between your calves and hamstrings um, so that there's some extra padding and some extra support as you sit down. As well, you're welcome to place as many pillows or blankets as you'd like underneath your chest or head so that the upper body has more support. If having your arms overhead does not feel good to your shoulders, you're also welcome to bring one or both arms down by your side and what's called fetal pose with palms facing up. Otherwise, arms forward. And we're just gonna hold here for three minutes. Um, so the physical benefits of this posture, right? We're stretching through the toes, the ankles, the knees, the inner thighs and hips. We're lengthening through the lower back, middle back, upper back, through the shoulders and neck spine. These are the physical benefits of the posture. But I think like on a deeply relaxing note, if you're ever having a stressful day and you start to feel almost like untethered, like you, you might float away, right, or ungrounded, this is a really beautiful posture to help you connect back to the ground, back to the earth, and back into your body. You might start to observe how your body moves with your breath. So as you inhale, feel your ribs open. And as you exhale, feel your ribs close. With every exhale, start to relax a little bit deeper onto the floor. Let the floor hold you up. We'll hold here for two more minutes. Take an inhale, feel your body rise. Exhale, body fall. As you're ready, you might lift your head and mindfully slowly walk your hands in underneath your shoulders. Slowly press yourself up. And remove any pillows or props that you're using. There's no rush. If your yoga mat is rolled up like mine is, you can unroll your mat and then turn, make your way onto your back for savasana. 
Lie down, arms and legs on the floor. Let your heels get heavy on the floor. Let the floor hold you up. With an inhale, feel your body rise. And exhale, body fall. I shared in my newsletter this week that yoga is about giving and receiving. A lot of, um, I guess what I would call like mainstream yoga content right now is really focused on yoga, like purely for self-care. So it's just about um, like the yoga practitioner without much emphasis on like larger community care. And so um, many teachers have inspired me to talk not just about yoga as self-care, but yoga as community care. Um, so I share that message a lot, but I also think it's important to say, yes, yoga is about caring for yourself so that you can care for others. But yoga is also about um, like asking for help, for being open to support, Right. And maybe that even starts simply with the practice of asking the floor to hold you up or letting a pillow support you or letting, you know, a blanket kind of soothe you and calm you. So you can start by asking for support. You know, it sounds silly, right? But from inanimate objects. And then maybe that can start to carry out off of our yoga mat as well allowing ourselves to be supported, not just by like things or places, but by people and institutions. And it's a symbiotic relationship, right? Giving and receiving, not purely taking, but also, also not just purely giving. One of my, um, my favorite things in nature, which many of you are probably aware of is um, mycelium, which is like a network of fungus and tree roots. Um, and trees, for those that don't know, actually communicate with one another through mycelium networks. And if one tree is like not doing very well and kind of like deprived of nutrients, other trees will give their own nutrients to that tree that's hurting through the mycelium network. Um, and I, you know, heard many yoga teachers talk about this before, so I'm not, I'm not saying anything new, but um, I, I really take that to heart as far as like, this is true in the natural world and it can be true with ourselves, that it's, that's, it's a give and take. And, you know, trees communicate with one another. That's not just true of humans, but trees also like give and receive to one another, right? And so we should be both um, taking and giving. And I think one of the, tools of yoga, how yoga is a tool is that it helps us kind of sustain both that give and take. So we're not giving too much, but we're also not, you know, we're not depleting ourselves, right? But we're also making sure that we're, we're not just solely focused on ourselves. Okay, as you're ready, you're gonna bend your knees so your feet are on the floor, knees rest together. This is called collapsed bridge. And this is a really wonderful alternative to Savasana for anyone that has lower back pain. Um, if lying with your legs straight on the floor does not feel good to you, you're always welcome to take a collapsed bridge like this instead. You can also put a small pillow blanket um, or towel under your lower back and that can also relieve some pressure there. I just know that collapsed bridge is um, a, like a really beautiful alternative to Savasana that I like to take off things. It just kind of feels good to my lower back and I might for you as well. As you're ready, you're gonna roll off to one side. And mindfully press yourself up. There's no rush. Very nice. Come to sit forward with your feet in front of you. 
leg straight. Look at your legs, identify which is left, which is right. Keep your left leg straight, cross your right knee over your left knee. You have an option to stay here. You can also bend your bottom leg so both knees are bent. Um, and it can also be helpful for some folks to have a pillow either under your sitting bones, in between the knees, right, under a foot. You can get creative of having a little extra padding somewhere on your body way to help this be more comfortable. Right, from here, you're gonna take your arms out to the side in a big expansive gesture. How much do you love yoga? This much. And then from here, cross your left elbow under your right elbow, left under right, and give yourself a big hug. And if you'd like, it can actually be soothing to rock back and forth a little bit. Um, a fun fact about the human body is it uh, does not know the difference between other people hugging you and you hugging you. They both release uh, like serotonin, happy chemicals in the body. Rocking is a really nice technique, like embodied movement to soothe the body. You have an option to stay here, giving yourself a hug, which always feels good to me. And also take this into eagle arms with your palms in prayer, thumbs towards you, pinkies away from you. It might also help, right? You can um, clasp your hands or grab a thumb, or again, keep holding onto your shoulders. As you're ready, start to lift your elbows up, opening through the shoulders. Keep your chin and chest lifted, holding here for a breath. Good. Lower your elbows down, and if you'd like, start to fold forward, bringing your elbows towards your knees. You might feel a side stretch on your right hip, right glute. We'll take a breath here. Right, if you're folded forward, come back into an upright position. Your hands are in prayer. Uncross your hands, give yourself another hug. Great, take your arms out, big expansive gesture. Beautiful, float your arms down. From here, reach your left arm up, palm faces forward. Rotate shoulder, palm faces back. Bend your left elbow, pat yourself on the back for something you're proud of this week. Take a moment for self-affirmation, especially if it's difficult for you to like acknowledge your own wins, your own goodness. You have an option to stay here or take your right palm to left elbow and pull down slightly. Keep your chin away from your chest. You have an option to stay here or take your right arm out to the right. Rotate shoulder, palm faces back. Reach behind you like you're scratching your own back. You might even touch your fingertips together or clasp hands. You have an option to stay here. This is cow face pose. You can also bow your cow, take an inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Shoulders back, chin and chest lift. So I'm trained in a style of yoga that comes out of Kolkata, India. And in our lineage of yoga, in this pose, if the right knee is on top, that means the left elbow is on top. But if you practice, for example, Ashtanga yoga, if the right knee is on top, that means the right elbow is on top. So as a reminder, um, Yoga is like ancient and sacred and holy, and it's also deeply human. And the difference of why one elbow versus the other is probably a guy like a hundred years ago was like, I think it's better this way, right? So it's, it's a very human thing to come up to center. If you have your hands clasped, release that clasp. We're gonna intentionally slowly reverse out. So as you're ready, take your right arm out to the right, rotate shoulder, palm faces forward, and then float your right hand down. Reach your left arm up. Rotate shoulder, palm faces forward, float your left arm down. Good, let's do the other uh, <laughs> To do the other side, I guess we should change our legs. Huh? If your bottom leg is bent, straighten your bottom leg, uncross top leg, and we'll do the other side. Bend your left leg so left knee stacks towards right knee. Option to stay here or bend your bottom leg as well so knees stack. Okay, from here, reach your right arm up. Rotate your shoulder, palm faces back. Bend your right elbow, pat yourself on the back for practicing yoga today. Good for you for coming to class. 
option to stay here or take left palm to right elbow. Again, this side might feel different. Does for me, that's okay. You can pull down, keep your chin away from your chest, chest lifted. Option to stay here or take your left arm out to the left. Rotate shoulder palm faces back. Reach behind you like you're scratching your own back. You can stay here, light and lifted. You can also fold forward, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. So again, you know, different styles of yoga will take different variations of the posture. And I share that partially because it's interesting, but partially because if you need to take a different variation of a posture, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or that you're doing the pose wrong, right? And there's like a million different versions of so many of these postures. Um, there's not like one true path towards, I don't know, like enlightenment or joy or um, health or wellness or vitality, right? So um, always be willing to play it. You can play around a little bit in the postures or make a shape that feels good to your body, even if what I'm doing and what you're doing don't necessarily mirror each other. That's okay. Good. Slowly bring your chest up to center. From here, take your left arm out to the left. Rotate shoulder, palm faces forward. Float your left arm down. Reach your right arm up towards the sky. Rotate shoulder, palm faces forward and float your right arm down. Beautiful. If your bottom leg is bent, straighten bottom leg. Uncross top leg. Good. And then you're gonna bring your feet apart for a forward fold. This is a posture where you might wanna grab some pillows just to place in front of you. Now, the wider you open your feet, the more you'll feel an inner thigh stretch. The closer you bring your feet together, the more accessible it might feel, right? A little bit more of a gentle stretch. And remember that this yoga is not, this class is not about getting the deepest stretch to your body. It's about using postures, breath work, intention to help us relax a little bit deeper. Stick your butt out a little bit. If it helps, you can actually like pull your butt out from under you, sitting forward of your sit bones. We're going to fold forward. Um, adding pillows in front of you can help so that you still get a gentle stretch, but you're not folding like all the way forward, right? Um, and from here, I'm crossing my elbows and putting my chin on my wrist. You are welcome to keep your chin and chest lifted. If it feels good, you can round your back and let your head drop. Um, I wouldn't recommend that for people with like a history of slip discs because it can put too much pressure on the lower back. But for some folks, rounding the spine in a forward fold feels really good. For other people, keeping a nice flat back feels good. And if you're ever dealing with like a, a serious injury or illness or um, you know, an accident or something like that, I always recommend um, consulting with a physical therapist or a doctor who can probably give you some, some good tips on ways to continue your yoga practice in a way that's working with whatever ails you. We're going to hold here for one minute. As you're ready, slowly push or lift yourself up. If you have pillows in front of you like I do, you can set those to the side for a moment. With or without the use of your hands, you can bring your knees and feet together. And again, stick your butt out a little bit. I'm going to show you from the side. And we'll do a forward fold, this time stretching the hamstrings. Um, so again, you can just fold forward like this, or you can place pillows in between your thighs and your chest. And you can really wedge them in there as much as you want. Then again, you can fold forward, just getting a gentle stretch through the backs of the legs.
think it's a yoga myth that, you know, when you practice yoga, I don't know, like your mind goes blank or you automatically enter into like a blissful state. And sometimes I find when I finally slow down and I'm still and breathe, that's when all the thoughts really start to come back. So if at any point in class you find that your mind is looping um, to a certain thought or your mind is wandering a lot, you might just practice focusing on your breath in and out through your nose. You can also be curious about your five senses. So you might anchor to a certain um, sensation in the body. You might anchor to like a smell, especially if you have like, um, you know, aromatherapy, like you have essential oil that you can put on your wrist before class, if that feels good. You might anchor to a soothing sound in the room or a sight, like again, looking at a spot on the floor or on your legs that helps you anchor. You can use your senses or just the, the image of your body expanding and contracting with the breath to help give your mind something to think about so that you can start to let go of the other stuff, like any worries or cares. Sometimes, you know, myself included, yoga teachers will say, like, let go of the day, let go of your worries and cares. But then it's like, okay, well then what should I focus on, right? So you can focus again on your breath, on the sensations in your body, and one of the five senses of that soothing to you. You're not just not thinking, you're giving your brain something to think about that's maybe a little bit more soothing or relaxing. Let's take three more slow breaths here. You're ready to press or lift yourself up. I'm gonna set the pillows to the side for a moment. And next we're going to do um, a back bend that is supported with pillows. So for this back bend, um, you're gonna sit facing away from your pillows. You'll want one or two pillows for underneath your lower middle back, and then one or two, maybe slightly smaller pillows for underneath your head. So the idea is you're gonna really open through the heart space, feel the spine through compression, but you don't want your head hanging all the way off. And it can take a little bit of trial and error to figure out um, like the pillow combination that's right for you. And keep in mind that today's class might feel different from the last time you tried this posture. So you might need slightly different props today and that's okay. Once you think you've found a good combo, remember that you can always come up and adjust. I'm just gonna start to lie back. Again, the idea is your heart space is lifted. Spine is gently healing. Your bum is still on the floor. You can keep your legs straight. You can bend your knees with your feet on the floor, knees resting together. Or if you'd like a hip opener, you can also open your knees out to the side. And if you do want to do the hip opener, it might also feel good to place pillows um, underneath your knees so that the knees aren't coming all the way down. This is going to be our longest held posture. We're going to hold here for, for five minutes, six minutes, so seven total. You can also have your arms down by your side or out in a big expansive gesture. Especially in our society right now, we tend to hunch forward a lot um, over our work and especially over our phones, right? We spend a lot of our day kind of rounded forward. Yoga helps us to sit up tall. And yoga also helps us to keep that back bend mobility in the spine. There's so many different back bends in yoga and some of them are like standing or kneeling or like even like, I don't know, you know, on your hands in a handstand, right? Um, and those are all wonderful. And I love all of those versions of back bends, but sometimes it's a little bit harder to relax in them because you really have to be aware of like where your body is in time and space. Versus in this back bend, right, you can close your eyes or pick a spot on the ceiling and just hold your gaze there rather than contracting any muscles to get into the posture. You can really just start to 
relax into the back bend. So it's just healing compression of the spine. And it should be a gentle opening through your shoulders, your chest, your abdomen, your hips. Again, it does not need to be the deepest back bend of all the time, of all time. This is yoga for deep relaxation. So if what you're doing doesn't feel very relaxing, all right, you might adjust your props. And then just return to your breath in and out through your nose. We'll hold here for four more minutes. Because we often store attention in the front of our body. Sometimes when we open our, the front of our body, that tension can come out. And that might happen in a physical sensation in the body. It can help happen with like a more emotional sensation in the body, which of course is also physical, right? Um, it could also happen, you might notice again that your mind really starts to wander or move to a certain thought. And again, you can use the tools in your toolbox of your breath sensations of your body, maybe even just looking at a spot on the ceiling or anchoring to a soothing you know, sound in the room, or even taking a nap if that feels good. Naps are welcome in this class as well. And what I just said is, you know, not applicable to everyone. Some people find this like deeply relaxing. Other people sometimes Again, when we enter into a little bit more stillness, it's not so relaxing. And neither of those are like good or bad. It's just observing what's happening in your body and kind of adjusting course accordingly. And inhale, feel your body rise. Exhale, body fall. Your knees are out to the side in the hip opener. 
Start by um, lifting your knees up and bringing your feet to the floor. There are many different ways to come out of this posture. I will share with you my favorite. You're gonna press your heels into the floor, lift your hips and remove the pillow or pillows from under the lower middle back. And then from here, you're welcome to keep the pillows under your head if that feels supportive. Otherwise, you can remove those pillows. Um, and then we'll go back either into collapsed bridge, just keeping your feet on the floor and your knees together, or savasana with your legs and arms down by your side. And sometimes the release from a posture can be as um, intense or therapeutic as the posture itself. So for example, right now, I feel almost like, I don't know, like a little bit lightheaded, like not in a dizzy way per se, but I can definitely feel like blood shifting around in my body after that back then. I'm not naming that sensation to say that you should be feeling the same thing. I'm naming that because I can only speak for myself. In fact, I very much don't want to say like, we are all experiencing this right now, right? But my, my hope is that as I name sensations in my body, you might be better able to name sensations in your body, even if they're very different, right? I love that we can practice similar postures and breathing exercises and have totally different experiences, not just day to day or person to person, but breath to breath, right? Sometimes I find that back then really relaxing, other times not so much. You might have a different experience than I do. And rather than judging that or trying to compare one another, instead, I just like to you know congratulate each of us for um, getting to know ourselves a little bit better and being a little bit more curious. Take your arms out to the side. You can have them completely long and extended. You can also bend your elbows, practicing them like goalposts. From here, bend your knees if they're not um, already. Bring your feet to the floor and start to roll to the left so that your right hip stacks on top of left hip, right knee on top of left knee, right foot on top of left foot. Roll your right shoulder down to the floor. It's a spine twist and an abdominal wall twist. Good for digestion, good for back health. You have an option to keep your knees bent and stacked. You can also straighten your bottom leg to the back of your mat. And if you'd like, you can kick out your top leg to the right side of your mat. And then I'm going to place a pillow underneath my right knee for a little bit more support. You're welcome to place pillows anywhere in your body that can use a little extra support. You can keep the back of your head on the floor, or you can look over your right shoulder, drawing your right ear down towards the floor for a neck stretch as well. <laughs> we'll hold here for three minutes. the physical benefits of this posture, twisting the spine, good for back mobility, twisting the abdominal wall, good for digestion. And if, especially if you have the bottom leg straight and the top leg kicked out, it's also stretching the right thigh. Um, in traditional Chinese medicine, there's this idea that, um, you know, different parts of your body equate to different parts of your life. So for example, if you have like pain on the front of your body, it's believed that that's um, a worry about the future or a hurt about the future. If you have pain in the back of your body, that's a concern or hurt from the past. And when we twist the spine, there's this idea that we're bringing um, the past and the future together so that we can really live in the present moment. And I share that just to say, I like to think of spine twist maybe as like just coming back, right back into the here and now.
And inhale, body rise. Exhale, body fall. If you're looking over your right shoulder, you can slowly roll the back of your head to the floor. If your top leg is kicked out, you can bend the top leg. And then bend your bottom leg so your knees stack one on top of the other. And then with or without the use of your hands, you're going to roll onto your back. We'll take a moment here and collapse bridge with the knees resting together, feet on the floor, if you feel your lower back on the floor, as your spine and abdomen reset. And then walking the feet together, we'll do the other side, roll to the left, pardon me, roll to the right so that your left hip stacks on top of right hip, left knee on top of right knee, left foot on top of right foot, drawing the left shoulder down to the floor. Option to stay here with knees bent or straighten your bottom leg to the back of your mat. And then if you'd like, you can kick out your top leg to the right side room for an IT band stretch. You can keep the back of your head on the floor and also look over your left shoulder, drawing your left ear towards the floor. And we'll hold here for three minutes. Notice where you might be holding on to tension in the body. And see if you can relax just a little deeper into the posture. Take an inhale and then exhale. If you're looking over your left shoulder, bring the back of your head to the floor. If your top leg is kicked out, then top leg. Mindfully bend your bottom leg. And then with or without the use of your hands, bring your feet and hips back down to the floor. For our final Savasana, um, you, you of course are welcome to do collapse bridge or have your legs straight. I'll also offer maybe kind of a more fun Savasana where you can put some pillows underneath your legs so that your legs are elevated. I'm not even sitting up, I'm just grabbing my pillows and throwing them under my 
under my knees. Okay. And then you can literally kick your feet up. So your feet are a little bit higher um, than your heart. And that helps to relax the body as well. If you have a blanket, you're welcome to place a blanket over you. You can have your arms down by your side. You can have your hands, like maybe one hand on abdomen and one hand on chest. You can have your arms out to the side. Whatever feels not just good, but maybe like meaningful and symbolic to you. And close your eyes or do a soft, fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose or anchor in a spot on the ceiling. These options are not to overwhelm you, just to suggest that there's space for everyone. And inhale, body rise. And if it feels good, you can exhale through your mouth, just letting the day go. Relax through the crown of your head, back of your head, and the nape of your neck. Soften through your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Release any tension from your temples. Let your eyes be heavy in their sockets. Soften through the bridge of your nose and nostrils, under eye area and cheeks. Relax your outer ears and inner ears. Let your earlobes be heavy. Relax your lips, tongue, thumbs, roof of the mouth, each and every tooth. Relax your jaw. Relax your jaw. Relax your jaw. Soften through your throat and chest. Give your shoulders permission to relax. Let the floor hold you up. Relax through your armpits and upper arms, elbows, forearms wrists and palms. Send a nice loving breath all the way into your fingertips. Relax through your chest and abdomen. Soften through the shoulders, shoulder blades upper back, middle back, lower back, all the way through side torso. Relax through your hips and seat. Relax your pelvic floor, inner thighs, outer thighs and calves. Soften through your calves and shins. Let your heels be heavy. Relax through the tops of the feet, bridges of the feet. Send a nice loving breath all the way into your toes. Relax your head. Relax your hands. Relax your feet. This deep relaxation is something that you have given yourself, it's something that you have within yourself. You can access whenever you need it, if only through a few slow breaths. 
maybe even just one child's pose or savasana. This gift of relaxation is a gift that you have given yourself by extension, your greater community. As you let the floor hold you up, remember that you are worthy of support. You are loved. You are loved. You are so loved. When you do choose to get up from Savasana, get up slowly. And especially if you have low blood pressure, sit up for a while before you stand up because we have been on the floor for a while. Make sure that you're being good to yourself in body, mind, and spirit for the rest of your evening. And I hope to practice with you all soon. Bye, friends.